I'm Randy Huey, and uh, across my working life as a career and tech ed teacher, we've seen programs diminish and go away all over the United States. They're expensive, they cannot service as many students at any given moment, and it's hard to find qualified teachers. When I was a high school student, there were wood shops and construction shops and metal shops and automotive shops very specialized ways that students could make things. My colleague Tim Pike and I here at Sitka High School, uh, he and I had been talking for many years about what are the ways that we want to integrate the use of computers in controlling tools to manufacture things. When we saw the ways that laser cutters, 3D printers, and CNC vinyl machines could be used to manufacture things, we recognized a good idea when we saw it. Here is a way to do manufacturing without creating the new lab and doesn't take anywhere near a specialized teacher or a facility. With just a regular classroom and a few relatively inexpensive tools, you can make a place where students manufacture things. This laboratory was created two years ago as a place for students to both design and create things. This lab with this tooling isn't so much industrial, it's a bit more educational. Nonetheless, they make real things and they solve real problems using this software and this tooling. I'm Harry Hartzog, I go to Sitka High School and I'm in the Fab Lab program. Tim comes to me, he has a basic sketch and I used Rhino to help take that and make it three-dimensional. And the idea is that you can strap the commodities to it so during takeoff and landing of the aircraft, they won't shift. And I was really amazed how he took my basic idea, you know, and converted it into this thing and, and looked at it in ways to make it better. We're talking about uh, this uh, college to career readiness. Yeah. You know, I'm ready to hire this young man right now. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... Because the manufacturing industry is now a, a global enterprise, a designer working on a screen in their office and sends a file to a manufacturing plant in Thailand who makes the product. This is the way manufacturing happens in the 21st century. Sherwood High School and Sitka High School created a partnership to sort of simulate that. Well, John Niebergall and I created a project in which students worked in remote design groups. Each school, depending on what kind of technology they had, they could make the part and then ship it to one school for assembly. For students to collaborate in a classroom is awesome, but when you can reach out to another school, whether it's a close by local school or a school in another state, that's very different for kids. And that collaborative piece has been really cool to see. So this is our gear machine, or gear box. It's a CNC working gear machine. I'll move it a little bit so you can see that everything works. But all these parts are made from either different people or different machines here in our fab lab. You can see these white gears were 3D printed, made of a 3D printer. And this gear right here was actually laser cut. Here, there's even, I don't know if you can see between here, but these two gears are the same gear that is made from entirely different materials. This is 3D printed, this is laser cut and it shows that any, any school, if they have just one of these or if they have just two of these, they can make one of these parts and, and we can collaboratively assemble it and we were trying to put this all together and with all these different gears and all these different parts but sometimes there was one part where it would block a gear so it's a lot of trial and error, a lot of pre-drafting, pre-design and revision. The collaborative project was really fun because I, I really saw that they rose up to it and we had you know, the go, no go gauges, and they actually had to meet tolerances and they had to fit. They proved to me they're perfectly capable of handling tolerances at industry specs. It's just, I think as teachers, we just were too soft on them and they could do it. The really cool thing was that nobody really understood the significance of that except people in business and said, I was just on a conference call this morning with like four other sites and in the real world, that's what they're doing. So that's what we're doing. The relevance of this content area to the real world is, I think, pretty obvious. Increasingly, computers control machines to do things. There's no doubt in my mind that it is a, a viable uh, vocational skill. My name is Eric Campbell. I'm a uh, member of the technical staff at Calypto Design. 
Uh, we make software to help people design computer chips. When I was out recruiting at colleges, basically what I was looking for was trying to find a bunch of 21 year olds, 22 year olds that we could offer jobs at $60,000 a year. And we have a really, really hard time finding them. You look at the number of openings there are for computer science, and it far outpaces the, uh, the number of graduates that our, our, our in-state universities are able to, to produce. So I, I think this is huge. Everybody had an idea. Everybody's working on creating and building something. We're creating these, these uh, technology entrepreneurs. And that's what I saw. It wasn't really a classroom like I was expected. It was, it was innovation. Everybody was solving a personal problem. Being able to solve problems that you've never seen before is huge. It's a huge, huge skill set. So Niebergall came to me with the idea about the Connect Scanner. So I took the initiative and tried it out. And at the start, it was kind of a struggle for me because I wasn't the best with computers. So basically, all it is is an Xbox 360 Connect. It reads in infrared and measures depth. And so it creates a 3D object. So you can uh, scan people, and then you can 3D print that. And I love that work. It's pretty fun. My name is Mary Wagner, and I'm the superintendent of the Sitka School District in Sitka, Alaska. So one of the things I'm most excited about is that they're really truly living the essence of what we hope students graduate with, and that's that they have a skill set that allows them to be successful in life after high school. And you, you have to make sure the role of public education is to make sure that every single student has the same opportunity. So what you really need to do is to have a component where you're saying, here are all these different resources, and you have the tools available to meet the creative needs, the collaboration needs, the communication needs, the critical thinking needs, the problem solving needs. And so it is an investment, and those investments are difficult choices to make. But when you look at the, the investment value, your return on investment, is significant when you look at how a resource such as the Fab Lab can help students in profound ways, meaningful ways, and not just the students who are excelling no matter what environment they're in, but it draws in students from a variety of backgrounds, a variety of skill sets. So my name is Jane Comer and I am Sherwood High School's instructional coach. My work in the classroom has been mainly with kids who struggle, not necessarily special education, but they just don't seem to have solid study habits. And I come down here and I see them working in this classroom, or this setting, and I see them doing amazing things. And they're not struggling. I had a kid who could hardly read and he brought up this pen that he'd created and made on the lathe in the wood shop. And I, I said to him, that, that is the most beautiful pen I think I've ever seen. And he's like, well, it's not perfect. Let me tell you why. And he pointed out these these little mistakes he'd made and what he was going to do better the next time. And I thought to myself, that, that's learning. That's amazing. And, I, you know, a kid who sees so little success in other areas of our building coming down here and being able to do that, that's, that's valuable. But that kid graduated. He made it through. He's now working for an, a pump company in Portland. Uh, he's working in the shop probably making more money than you and I combined, and I applaud him. He's doing a great job, and life, is, life has turned out well for him. So yes, he probably still does struggle with reading, but it's like intellect. Intellect doesn't just come from books. Intellect is, can be innate, it can be inborn, and, and demonstrated in so many different ways. And these programs give kids who perhaps struggle in the traditional academic intellect. It gives them a place to, to be successful. And they're essential, they're not elective.